it's just going to be a quick little video announcing that the update 5.0 for the Ultimate Multiplayer FPS template is now out and released on the Marketplace. Now this is also going to be a quick little devlog where I cover some of the key points. However, I'm not going to be covering everything because it is quite a large list. So starting from here and working our way down, we go all the way to here. So as you can see, it's several pages. So I wanted to focus on a couple key things here and also start off with an announcement that until the 27th of March, the plugin is at a $30 discount. So after the 27th, the price is going to be bumping up by another $30. So to begin, this update comes with a new recoil system. So I want to go ahead and show that off. So if you head over to the firearm or any of your firearms, if you scroll down a little bit, under animation, you'll have a new section called recoil data. Open that up, you'll have the recoil rotation curve and recoil location curve, as well as the recoil location randomness and the recoil pitch, roll, and yaw randomness. So this allows you to kind of set different values that you can fluctuate between. So the most important one, in my opinion, is the rotation to give a more realistic feel. So we'll start there. So if we look at it, here you can see the red, for example, is the pitch. So as I shoot, the muzzle flips upward a little bit. So here the muzzle starts to come up. Here it goes up at its highest point. Then it starts to settle back down and it overcorrects a little bit and then flattens back out. Now if we look at the randomness form, we have a value between one and zero. And that allows us to get a kind of a different result for each shot. So hang on, I'm playing with two clients here. If I go ahead and just shoot a couple shots, You can see because of the randomness, it has a fluctuation on the pitch, roll, and the yaw. And this is going between negative values and positive values. For instance, with the yaw, that is rotating left and right, that allows it to go again left and right. Same thing for the roll. However, for the pitch, we don't want the muzzle to go down, so you just leave these at positive values, and you can control them and everywhere between. So if we head over to the location, here you can see the green. This is actually going into your shoulder and then the red is going down a little bit. So it kind of goes into your shoulder and down slightly. Next up, we have the new aim interface. So this basically now allows you to make anything aimable. So what I mean by that is here I have my rangefinder, which is just a class derived off of my magnified sight class, and literally you can just aim with it. So for example, I have I need to add more examples to this, but you can add this to anything. So for example, if I added the aim interface to a red dot or something along those lines and attached it to my hand, you could aim with it, just like in the old DayZ days where you could pick up a magnified optic, put it into your hand, and use it kind of like a pair of binoculars. Well, this is done in the exact same way. So if I press 3, I'll spawn one into my hand, and I can aim with it, and this is all procedural. So I can go ahead and I can mark out distance between the targets, if I can even hit this, like so, and just get their distance. Now that brings up the other thing is going to be the first focal plane reticle fix, as well as the firearm pickup. So I've overhauled the equip system, so that allows it to basically have you more easily, well, be able to do things such as picking up different firearms and switching between them. Now, as far as the reticle first focal plane fix is concerned, that is for, if you're not familiar with what first focal plane optics are, as you can see here, this optic I have it set as first focal plane. So if you look at my reticle, as I zoom in, my reticle size increases. And when I zoom out, it decreases. So it scales with your reticle, or sorry, it scales with your magnification. Now, the problem we had before was, let me actually study this out entirely really quick. There we go. So the problem was before, when you would go to aim, let's say here, let's say the holdover is three. So you're aiming three mils high to hit this target. Well, when we would zoom in and out, the reticle would adjust. Like the scale would scale differently than your magnification. However, now it's a one-to-one. -one. So for example, you can see, well, hopefully, if I press F8 and zoom in just a tad, you can see that the three is right at the head of the plate. And if I zoom in, 
the 3 is still there. So it stays right where we want it. So that was the fix there. So that way you can now actually use your reticle properly at different magnifications for holdovers. Now that brings us to another topic with magnified optics, proper scope turrets. So I have actually gone through, and if we look at the scope here, over here we have turret adjustment type, and we have mill radians and MOA, or minutes of angle. So you can really switch between these two, and that controls your actual scope adjustments. So for each click on the turret, if you have it set to MOA, it is going to be 0.25 of an inch or quarter of an inch. And if you have it set to MRAD or mill radian, it's going to be 0.1 mils. So, well, this is all at uh, 100 yards and 100 meters. So I think it's, uh, what is it, 0.3, MRAD is 0.36 of an inch at 100 yards, I believe. So I have it set to MRAD by default. And now let's go ahead and check it out. Okay. And this also had another fun feature. So let's go ahead and get a rough baseline. Here I'll hold over at nine mils. And I'm hitting way low. So what I can do is I can spam page up and adjust my reticle. Now one thing you'll notice if you actually look at the turret here, the turret adjusts. So I already know ahead of time, I think it's at like 6.9 mils for elevation. So now if I hold over none and fire we get a hit all right next up another big thing is the implementation of flashlight blinding so here i've added a couple other effects to the actual flashlight itself so here you can see it's got a beam going on and as i swipe and go into his eyes we now have a new blinding effect so this is done simply through a plane of material so it's for what it is, it's pretty lightweight, and you can control the actual shape and all that kind of stuff of the glare as you wish. And then we just have some very simple, uh, what do you call that? Haze or whatever you call this. I'm not entirely sure what the actual word is there, but for the actual beam itself. But that's just something I thought would be quite neat to go ahead and add because it is something that is quite useful and actually getting an advantage with your flashlights. Up next, we have the shake curve. So this is one of those little additive effects that in my opinion makes things look a little bit nicer. So basically, if you're familiar with ground branch, when you go from high port to ready or low port to ready, you kind of have a little bit of a shake that gets applied. So here I'm at high port and when I go to aim, you can see I just apply a little bit of shake to it. So it's just one of those things that kind of gives you a nice little extra feel to it. And in my opinion, adds a little bit onto the actual, well, it just gives it a little bit of a proper feel, like, like the gun has some actual weight to it. You can see under the curve and shake settings, here you have full control over all of that. So the shake curve is what was just playing. Again, it's just a vector graph, so you can control how it plays. So here's my basic oscillation as it goes through. You have the duration for how long you want it to play, and then you can perform the shake after port pose. So if I were to disable this, it wouldn't play a little shake after I go from high port to ready. Next up is a pretty fun one. So we now have, well, I just call it here muzzle heat up so I know what I'm talking about, but a fancy material added to the suppressor and the barrel. So here I'm gonna spray in full auto, hopefully this isn't too loud, and do basically just two mag dumps. just to go ahead and get everything hot. And we'll just do one more turret. So here you can see the barrel and the muzzle device is heating up. And we also have some smoke that goes through with it. So again, this is all in the example just to show you how to make use of it if that's something you wish to add. Next up on this topic is delayed sound playing. So this is a little bit difficult for me to demonstrate. Also, we got a new customizer just to make things simple, so no animation required. But that's gonna be um, basically the speed of sound. So we now have an option to play with the speed of sound. So let me go ahead and I'll work my way through it and I'll show you. So we shoot this guy. 
Never mind, I'm out of ammo. Oops. Yep, there's some I. Okay, let's go a little farther. And a little farther. And we don't need to hold over as much as I thought. So you can see after the projectile hits, we hear the sound. Like so. You might be able to hear it here. Like so. So that just adds a nice little delay there, and it's very simple to play as well. So here we have two spawn impact effects functions, and one of them is spawn impact effect sound delayed. So they are the exact same. The only difference is one plays with the speed of sound. So again, it's relatively simple. This is all going off of my physical material system. However, let's say you are not using the system, but you still want to play that with the speed of sound. Well, I do that for gunshots as well. So here's my example in play fire sound. I have a new function called play sound delayed. And as you can see here, it just takes in the location of the sound, just any world actor. So in my case, I'm using the firearm and then the sound settings. So if we look at the sound settings, are they are, or just the sound itself, and multiplier for the volume, and the pitch, if you wish to do that. So this isn't a whole lot of control in here. The majority of the control is, again, using the actual spawn impact effect sound delayed. So we split the struct up. Here we have the sound settings, which are just those. We have all the impact effects and all that kind of stuff there to do, basically, well, as you wish. Simple as that. Next up is the offset attaching to hand. So one thing that is, well, that I see people commonly do is with the mannequin, they just use marketplace animations, marketplace firearms, and they just kind of slap them together. And what they end up with is a lot of sockets on the character. So if we go ahead and look at the character skeleton, which by the way is now based entirely off the mannequin, let's look at hand underscore R. So what you'll see here is people just right click, add a socket, and they'll have a bunch of these for a bunch of different, well, firearms. So what I'm going to do for this M4 is I'm going to attach it from the firearm group socket that I made to my hand underscore R. Now let's go ahead and look at that by default. As you can see, it is gripping right at that bone right here in the center of the wrist. So what I've added is the ability to actually offset this. So here you'll see grip socket offset. And this allows you to change that as you wish. So to get a rough idea of what you can do here is let's go ahead and, well, in my opinion, this is the easiest way to figure out the value. We're going to add a socket. We're just going to call this one example socket. I'm going to add a preview asset of my M4 right here. And I'm just going to get it, you know, relatively close. Nothing too fancy. I'll we'll just go a little bit that way, and I'd say that's good. So let's say we're happy with that. Well, I'm going to grab the relative location. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to go over here and paste that into my location and do the exact same thing for the rotation. Compile and save. And now we can delete that socket. So now when we hit play, there we are. We now have the firearm in the position of the socket that we just made. So as you can see, it's a little bit off, so obviously we could really go through and tweak it, but it's at least close. So that's what that's there to handle. Up next, we have a new short stocking system. So what short stocking is, is basically, if, you're, if you've ever heard of it, maybe it's called compression. As you walk into something, you kind of compress the firearm, and then eventually we'll go into high or low ready, depending on what your stance is. So now, the way it was before was you would just have a simple forward and back. Now we have an actual pose. So here we can see this is our short stock pose. So as I walk into this wall, we slowly go into that pose, which is just above my shoulder. So it'll probably be a little bit easier to see with two clients.
Okay, let's go ahead and get him and face this guy. Let's go on this side of him. So as I walk into the wall, fire him kind of goes up into that position. And then it finally breaks and goes to a high port, like so. So that's kind of the gist of that system. Next up, well, lastly, we have replicated yaw and get base aim rotation. So this isn't going to be the most, I guess, used thing, but basically, uh, get base aim rotation and get control rotation, depending on which one you're trying to use. The yaw is not replicated in either. So you generally use get base aim rotation for things like looking up and down for your pitch, as that's what I actually use to drive my spine rotation. So as we look up and down for the remote clients, they're seeing the base aim rotation. For the local client, this guy, we're using the control rotation. So as I look up, other clients see me looking up. That's because of the get base aim rotation value. Now that by default replicates, well, it has a replicated pitch. However, the yaw is not. So let me go ahead and show you. So inside of my character component here, I have two functions for, well, as you can assume, get base aim rotation and get control rotation. With get base aim rotation, what we're doing is we're getting the base aim rotation, and then we're applying the replicated yaw to it, and then returning it. So if you wanted to get that, all you have to do is just get a hold of the character component, which you would have anyways, and get the base aim rotation. And now you have a base aim rotation with a replicated yaw. So that pretty much wraps up, in my opinion, the bulk of the bigger or more, I guess you could say, visually pleasing features. Uh, I did go through and actually rework the windage. So that's one more thing I can show really fast. So we now have proper windage support. So let's head down here. And as you recall, when I would fire, I'll just shoot right here. Let me go ahead and zero right on up. So what was it, like 6.9 mils? There we go. So let's go ahead and shoot. And impact. So let's go ahead and go to the right. As you can see on the right-hand side, the turret is rotating as well. So if I shoot now, we'll go way left with our point of impact. Like so. So that was about five mils. Nope, four. There we go. So we can just track right back over. And shoot. And there we go. So now we're right back on target. So that was something else just point out really fast. I went ahead and added that alongside with the, uh, since I was going through and doing the reticle fixes. So you now have the ability to control the windage as well as your elevation like you could before. So that basically wraps up the more visually pleasing features like I stated. If you're interested in the rest of the stuff that has really been going on since the submission here, well, you have quite a hefty read. So I'll go ahead and link this in the description below. And as well, it goes up to here. So everything from here and below is what is currently out. Everything from here and up is stuff that I've done since the release. So as you can see, I'm going through and doing some fixes and just small other improvements and a little bit of a feature helping based on requests from other people. So again, that wraps up this video. This product is on a $30 discount until the 27th of this month. So if you're interested in it, now's a good time to get it before the price increases. So I'll see you in the next devlogs.